Hello and welcome to this edition of A Conversation With. My name is Jim Marshall on the New Bedford Cable Network and we are going to talk about census. And we're going to talk about the census here in New Bedford with the two co-chairs. I want to make sure I get this right. The New Bedford Complete Count Committee with Helena Marks and Dave Lena, who are the co-chairs of the committee appointed by the mayor. Welcome. Welcome. My old friends. Thank you. Um, this is a very important topic for the city. It's every 10 years the census comes about. And this year, as is, is Reverend Dave was talking off camera, this is an important year. Uh, lots at stake for the city. Tell us a little bit, at least at the start here, what's the committee that you two are co-chairing? What is your goal right now at this point in time? First of all, it's to make sure that everyone in the city is counted. And, um, and especially for the hard to reach uh, population, the immigrant population, we find that this year, um, at this time for the census, is going to be even more difficult to make sure that um, the hard to reach immigrant population gets counted because everybody benefits. And if we don't, if we don't have accurate numbers, we're all going to lose money and the city's going to lose money. And so it's just so important to make sure that every, is, everyone's counted no matter what immigration status they have. So that is very important for us to do that. As we know, last time, 10 years ago, when we did the census, we were already undercounted, so that we had about close to 94,000 people, and the whole idea is we know we have over 100,000 people. So we just want to make sure that the hard-to-reach population is counted this time so the city, the city doesn't lose money again. You guys uh, were appointed the co-chairs back in June. I'm curious, is, is this something new that the city's doing with, with a committee that's uh, been formed to, to tackle this topic, or has there been other things the city has done to in the past i've never heard of a committee i guess i think every administration has had some uh organization to be able to come together and and do this work uh in the past there has been more funding that's come from the federal government uh surprise surprise there is no federal funding for local communities uh which makes it even more important that you bring together committees uh people who are interested in care and understand the importance of getting a complete count and uh, because it, it's vital when you stop to consider that uh, for every person counted the city is eligible for twenty five hundred dollars worth of funding we believe that for the last two census at least we've been undercounted by a minimum of ten thousand people that relates to twenty five million dollars of eligible funding that would come to our community that we're losing Every year. Every year. Uh, and the count only happens once every 10. So if you fail to get a good count for 10 years, you lose that type of money. Well, 10 years worth of 25 million accounts to a whole lot of million dollars, you know? And uh, so you're talking 250 million. What could we do in this city with 250 million dollars? Uh, worth of stuff, you know, the taxes that we all complain about, the the fees that have to keep going up, the parking and the roads, schools, all of that funding is eligible funding that we would be able to receive with the complete count. And the committee is made up of a very diverse group. You've got city officials, you've got uh, business folks, you've got some um, school schools, religious organizations as well. Um, I assume that the um, uh, the dynamic of the group is because those are the people that will be in touch with the community. the community to get the count done. Exactly. And I think the whole idea, and at least and to make sure that every community that we touch, that, we un that they understand exactly what's in stake for our city and, if we, and how we, every single person in the, in the city needs to be counted. I know that the last time, 10 years ago, there was an extreme undercount with children. And we know that there, are, and so that is important too, that everyone in the home, children are all included in the count. And we wanna make sure that people understand how this, if we don't get counted, how this our city is in jeopardy of losing so much money, just like Reverend Lima just mentioned. It's important to understand, you know, like, like the point. We, a lot of times we identify the hard to reach population and, you know, the undocumented mm -hmm. or as some people would say illegal. And, you know, let's just put it out there so that people understand. And, and there's a lot of rhetoric that's out there uh, right now about, you know, we can't count these folks, they're here illegally. Uh, whatever your politics is, is irrelevant. If you're a mm -hmm. citizen in New Bedford, 
we're losing the money for services that are being done. Mm -hmm. People have to be taken care of. People will be taken care of, regardless of your politics. Mm -hmm. And so to cut off our nose to spite our face is, is pretty foolish. And that's why it's adam you know, we have to be adamant with people to understand a complete count only helps us all. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the politics aside, we'll take care of the politics in Washington. Uh, it may take. Well, I won't even go there. Well, the interesting yeah. thing, too, is you talk about the, the politics in Washington, people may not understand, too, that the census count affects your congressional delegation. Absolutely. And the last census, we lost a congressional lost seat. A seat in Massachusetts. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So the more voices you have in Washington, and I don't know how it plays out numbers-wise, is how many you get, um, but obviously the more voices, the better off you're going to be heard down there. Exactly, and then especially with schools, as we know that we need all the money we can get for our schools. and. Depending, you know, what status you are, but illegal or undocumented, which is the same thing, the children are in school, and so they are really, they're using the benefits that are available. So it's just so important that everybody understands that that everybody needs to be counted, and the information is is private. We are the you know they are, the census is not going to be sharing any of the um, numbers or information on the census with anyone because there's a penalty if you do that. So it's just very important that everybody understands that we all need to fill out the census. And as a role um, with the Immigrant Assistance Center, what I feel, what I see is, and we've done this, this is our fourth, this is my fourth rodeo mm -hmm. I've been with census. And the, the thing is, is that they're coming in um, with a population, like this is like Reverend Lehman mentions, this is the first time we're gonna be doing it online. And so what we see, and we've done it in the past, is when people used to receive the sentence in the mail, they would bring it to the center. We would explain uh, what the census was and fill it and help fill it out for them, especially with the um, population, the elderly who are illiterate in their own language. A lot of times we would just translate the questions and then have them answered, and then we would do that for them. I see us doing exactly the same work but making sure also utilizing our computers and uh, uh, to also in the libraries to make sure I was going to say, when you look at the list, you've got the com some community centers, you've got the libraries for sure. I don't know if the churches have uh, the ability to we are looking into <coughs> We're looking into what churches have the means mm -hmm. that would be able to uh, uh, help people. Again, the biggest thing is going to be to help build confidence in mm -hmm. folks, educate them on how important this is, uh, it is going to be our goal, you know, both of us. Uh, Helena, of course, is, is the premier leader when it comes to the immigration, uh, immigration uh, causes in this city. Uh, I happen to be one of the faith leaders in this community. But we're doing this with everybody, you know, so we're talking to businesses, we're talking to the elderly uh, housing and, and, you know, the uh, all low-income uh, housing and things like that every place we want to get to reach them and so for instance we might try to get a church who might have sometimes after service uh, a coffee hour a potluck mm -hmm. talk to your elderly talk to your disabled talk to your people that may have a challenge don't have computers or anything else and have have a time afterwards where you have a few extra tablets or computers ready mm -hmm and help somebody with with doing their census. As you stated, uh, Helena stated, this year is going to be the first year that the U.S. Census is going to be sending out cards with our identifiers for our addresses and asking people to fill out the census online. You'll be able to do it online, you'll be able to connect on your phone, your tablet, your computer, and you'll be able to fill out the whole census. And it doesn't take long to fill it out. It doesn't take long, and especially if you get it electronically. I, I hate handwriting anything, you know, even when it's checking boxes and stuff. But when you're able to do it online, it can be simple. And this way, you know, we're asking, we're going to be asking groups of people to help their population. This is all about networking. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting that word out, building confidence, and helping people understand the importance. Again, to Helena's point, when it comes to households, a lot of times... You have a husband and a wife, or you have you know, whoever's the, the, the breadwinners in the house. And we seem to think that because there's occupation uh, questions and demographic questions, you know, in terms of age and, and ethnicity and, and everything else, 
we think it's just the adults that are supposed to be counted. Well, the federal government is going to give us extra money for schools if we're not counting our kids. Mm -hmm. And some households, you know, in my house, we had three growing up, you know. And so if I didn't put down the three, that's three less in mm -hmm. the city of New Bedford that they would see. So when the city says we need more money for education, they look at the last census. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys actually went down. It, that's not always accurate. That's why it's, it's necessary. And that's why this year's uh, uh, slogan is everyone counts in New Bedford. Everyone counts. We're talking with Dave Lima and Helena Marks, who are the co-chairs of the New Bedford Complete Count Committee, the census uh, for the 2020 year. Give the calendar for people right now. The, the actual, uh, right now you guys are networking, uh, talking about this stuff to groups and what have you. The actual counting hasn't started yet, though. No. No. Um, and it starts May. next year, May of 2020. And how long do you have to, to do the count? Until the end of the summer. Yeah, that's roughly the time. Labor Day, somewhere around there. Um, so, w so it really comes down to those four months. That's right. All this that all that work that you're doing now to get that done and educating as many people um, as we can. Especially, I've, I've, I'm going to be doing a lot of work with the ethnic media because I think a lot, especially with the, the hard-to-reach immigrant population, they really listen to radio and television. And, and so I will be I'll be doing a lot of t TV programs about you know the importance of um, how to fill out the census and a citizenship question is definitely not going to be on. Um, but the whole idea is and we're trying to get as many questions filled out because one of the things that w I have been told is that if we're filling out, this, if we're helping people fill out the census and people don't feel, leave a lot of questions blank, that they will be getting a home visit. So we'll be not having somebody knock on at the door. So, so making sure that everybody, that they, they fill out as many questions as possible on the census because that's important. So it sounds like there'll be three ways to do it, it sounds like. You can do it online, yes. the new way. Mm -hmm. You'll still get something in the mail. That's correct. And if that and all else fails, you would get a door knock. That's yes. correct. Um, and I would assume the door knock is the last, the last, last yeah. hope. Exactly. Or last It'll step. be the way it's been done for, for generations, that's right. you know. Uh, but again, that's why the hope is that people, when they receive that initial mailing and they get that identifier mm -hmm. with that website, that they'll do that. Yeah. And what, what will happen is the government, uh, they will end up generating a list of people that haven't, mm -hmm. you know? And oh, then so they're gonna keep a running, in a sense, a running tally of who's responded so far. Right, because okay. again, uh, there's, 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 there are people, in fact, there's, right now you could go online and apply. Uh, to, to work with the census um, and what ends up happening is uh, hopefully we're going to get a lot of I'd, I'd love to be able to see but since it's the first time a 30 or 40 percent of uh, people taking care of it online and so if you it would be redundant obviously if the government didn't come up with the list of people who haven't responded mm. otherwise you're visiting every home again and then you're going to end up well i already did that i already did that you know um so you know the bottom line is is it, it they're trying to make it easier but because it's brand new we'll see how <laughs> the, it works they'll be, they'll be growing pains yeah. yeah who gets the letter at home or who get for example in a husband and wife situation and you know, I look at my case. I mean, Kim's the boss. There's no question about that. But who gets the letter? Is it, because you're not going to go to both the husband and wife separately. I'm imagining. No, I think it's. it's I think it's Hus addressed to the household. Hold. That's what I think. Oh, okay. Too. Resident. So uh, if one of them fills it out. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter who fills it as long as you make sure you have everybody on, that you put right. the correct. No, but I'm just. I don't know how it's labeled I guess as far as I, I believe it's household uh, again I'm not exactly sure exactly what the title would be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're looking to see that's the important thing it's everybody in the household so mm -hmm. say for instance you took in your mother-in-law say for instance you've got uh, a brother that's been ill and, and, and lost his job and they're living with you you want to count everybody in the household every single person gets counted Period. And then, of course, there's demographics that get tossed in with it looking at pets and stuff like that. But is it, that's but is more for, for general information. Right, because, you know, the dogs that I have to walk every afternoon would definitely want to be counted. And that <laughs> would help with the dog food thing, too. That's true, too. <laughs> 
As far as, uh, it sounds, from what both of you were saying, the biggest issue, though, was the trust issue. That's right. How do you overcome that? Well, I think the thing is, I think, for example, with us, is that they're already coming in for services. We service about 12,000 people per year. Within the last three years, they've gone up 60%. So they're coming in for everything and anything. But they possibly. still would come in anyway. They come, yeah, they come so, in. But I mean, the trust barrier seems to be the hardest thing right now, yeah. to know that that information's not going to be shared. And that is, and, the, and, and that's key, is to really ex uh, educate them and, and making sure that they understand. And it's going to take a lot of time, because a lot of times they might trust us, but now we're not, not only are they there for services, then we can say, oh, and by the way, the census, how important it is for you to fill out the census, mm -hmm. and uh, that information is not going to be shared with, uh, with the government, and you don't have to worry about that, and really, because I feel that it takes a lot, and they've already trust us, so, they, so whatever we tell them, really, is that they listen. So I can see them coming in and us having this conversation and really explaining to them the importance about the city losing money, schools, the roads, and just having that conversation. And because we already trust, we already, you know, we've been working right. with immigrant communities since what, 1971. And I would assume so you're in the same, same yeah. boat yeah. as same, well. well same same religious and again, ministry. for both the churches, uh, synagogues, temples, uh, but it's not just it's not just what we do. Like I said, it's also bringing in those other community leaders that have yeah. their networks, their niches mm -hmm. in society, so that they can reach the people that they reach already. It is it does come down to a comfort level, yep. a trust level. Yep. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And let's be honest. Again, irregardless of your politics, the current administration, because they were looking to get a checkbox on on the thing, has put a lot of fear in the immigrant population. Uh, even people who are legal that's right. fear it because they just, you know, the, the rhetoric that's in coming out of Washington, uh, and again, uh, this is not a, this is, I'm just speaking factual, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not looking to, to cast judgment, okay? The bottom line is the rhetoric that's coming out of Washington has been so detrimental to what could possibly occur to the census that quite frankly our work has doubled. Mm -hmm. We have to build trust. There are people that even though the Supreme Court ruling came down that that question will not be on the, on the form, you still have people believe that somehow it's going to be. And so they, they, they question that. That's why you need trusted partners, you need trusted networks to be able to do that. So when the, when the minister is speaking to, to the population, especially our ethnic churches, people talking to the different cultures that exist, you got to get those leaders on board. You got to help build confidence in them that you can trust the system, mm -hmm. so that they can help their people to trust the system. It it is it is. And in fact, I'll even go this far: if you understand it, you know wherever you are, and you have a neighbor, you have a friend, you have somebody that you care about, just remind your neighbor: Hey, did you fill out the census? We need it for our city. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, Jim, most of us. We get mail all the time. Some of it we just consider junk and we put it to the side. Or we get something that says fill this out and, and send it back in or fill this out and, and whatever. And we put it in a corner. We'll get to it later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're asking people don't put it in a corner. Don't set it aside. Take care of it right away. Especially because you're going to be able to do it electronically. You can do it while you're watching TV. Have, have the, you know, just get the website. Do it on your phone. Do it on your tablet. It'll be simple, it'll be quick, and that way we'll be that much farther ahead. What mm -hmm. about people who, um, and I just thought of this now, uh, I mean, there are some people, or a lot of people in New Bedford that I know of that, that in the wintertime go to Florida or what have you, and they, I guess there's two homes, if you, I just want to look at it that way. Um, how is that, are they doing the census down in their other house, or are they doing it up here? It's four up here, I guess. Well, usually, you know, to our understanding, what happens is is uh, a person can fill it out any way they're going to want to, let's mm -hmm. face it. But the bottom line is, if you have a household here, yeah. uh, and where do you vote? Mm -hmm. Where do you, okay. wh that's what right. is you considered your primary legal residence? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, right. that's what you'd be asked to do. You know, now if somebody considers New Bedford their primary legal residence, but they spend eight months in Florida, you know, then, you know, they're going to have to make that decision. 
but the bottom line is it's it's the, usually it's your primary and we'd tell you if you have two homes or three homes or five homes still write new bedford down yeah you know we want new bedford to get as much as we need it, it has coming to us we need it we you know uh, you, you, we can complain about City Hall, we complain about fees, and we complain about all these things. You want to help lower that? You want to help hold the line on that? Let's get the census complete count. Exactly. Everybody counts. That's the motto. Everyone That's counts. Right. There it is. Talk for a second about, um, I know you briefly mentioned that uh, you're looking for, I don't want to say the volunteers, but workers to, to help with the actual process, but that won't be till. May, I'm assuming, or are they already taking applications and hiring people now? You can go online, and forgive me because I didn't bring it, and I'm not sure if you did, Helena. I didn't either, but uh, you can go online. So I will, I, will, I, will, I will take full responsibility, but we will get that information to you so you can add it to, to a, a stream. But uh, there is, uh, you can go online and you can apply already to the census here in, uh, uh, for our city, for our for our for the area and what would the person do what would a person do if they're if they're hired to do stuff with the census I think there's different I think there's outreach there was uh, helping fill out census I think and they're good paying jobs too and it's temper some are temporary temper some are temporary jobs and some of them are full-time jobs and they're paying like oh, really? eighteen dollars or twenty dollars yeah. an hour yeah. something I didn't like. realize there were full-time jobs too yeah there are some full times full-time and temporary so it's jobs. not just I mean the perception Part-time. the perception is you've got people just going to the doors but it's not just that either I mean there's there's, there's a lot supervisors, of supervisors, supervisory positions, uh, outreach district positions, positions, outreach yeah, positions. positions. There's all kinds of positions, uh, and there are quite a few positions that they that they. And we want our, our members of our community to get those jobs and uh, make sure because a lot of times you feel from the community, you know where the community where the community are. And so I think we don't want people from out of town to come here and help us with the census. Right. We can take care of ourselves. And those folks will be trained. Yep. And Definitely. then they'll show, um, obviously, if they do go to the door, the identification, as yeah. you were talking about, well is identified. so important. The badge. It is. Well, it is. It is. Um, well identified. And the people obviously know that it's, they're here, they're, I don't want to say legal, that's not the right word, but they're, they're they are census employees. They are, they have a badge, just like in previous years, that can identify themselves. And the whole idea is, if you send someone to someone's home with the badge, especially the hard-to-reach immigrant population, that's not going to work too well. So it's basically partnering with community, community-based organizations that have the trust the community. So when they go, they go with one of them. Which again is so important about us helping encourage the diverse community that we have to send representatives to get these jobs yeah. because now if you have somebody that's Portuguese that might need some language being able to speak a second language would be tremendous and it would mm -hmm. be a high priority for hiring Island, but yeah. if you got somebody that's different ethnicities different cultures somebody coming from that culture would be a great asset mm -hmm. being able to reach folks that speak Spanish you know that might be uh, uh, Colombian or, or something else being able to do that again helps with the comfort level, mm -hmm. the trust factor, you know, and uh, and, and taking it, it lowers the anxiety. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and that's 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 probably the biggest job we have right now is being able to make the awareness, lower the anxiety, build the trust. Uh, when when we do start making sure that everybody's going out like they're supposed to, it will start going over the airwaves. We'll be asking you. It's happening now, you know, whether it's just a, a something that you flash, you know, the census is happening, make sure you open the door, make sure you answer the, make sure you do it online. You know, it's, it, it's they'll be able to do it online the whole period of time. And they'll know? be in the, so, uh, and it'd be in a convenience of their home. Right, and I was gonna say too, it's gonna be in the language if you're, if you speak Spanish or Portuguese or what have you, they'll be able to. Depending, I'm not sure about, I know that for example, if they're either, I know that there's in Spanish. I'm not sure if they're going to have it in Portuguese. I think Portuguese was not one of the languages, okay. but that's an example, right? Or if, they, if it's Creole, if they speak Creole, if they come, even if it's in English, with our staff, right. we're, we're you know multilingual. We can translate the questions and have them answered. It's, uh, because this is, as you said, your fourth go around, uh, are the issue, it seems as though the issues would be the same in a sense the trying and the biggest issue to me just seems to be the trust issue but that's right it hasn't changed that hasn't changed in in the tenure that you've had to do this it's worse 
it's, it's worse. actually okay. worse right now because I think what's happening, even like 10 years ago when we were doing this, it was already, you know, we were undercounted as we all know, or even before. But I would say that with this, with the past, and again, I don't want to get into politics because I mean, this has nothing to do with politics. But I do have to say that within the past three years, I would say that the fear that is, and the anxiety that um, has been, you know, mm -hmm. that you hear every day in the media, I think, and the present administration, I really find that that has made it and this sort of like an anti-immigrant movement, no matter if you have, if you're a legal permanent resident or even you have no status, right? It's that is that has heightened that the anxiety on on immigrants in general. So I would say that I look at this now, um, this sense is now as even having a lot more challenges and a lot more barriers at, than in the, previous, in the previous years. The other thing too, I guess to your point earlier, that I think is interesting is that you look at, for lack of a better word, the younger generation, which doesn't seem to be interested in, or I don't want to say doesn't, lacks the interest uh, in some ways with government and, right. and that sort of thing. So, and that's not even an immigration issue, that's just a, a generational issue that, eh, why bother? Well, it's not, and it's not just the, the younger folks, you know, I, I, you know, I gotta remind my kids sometimes. <laughs> uh, but, but I know adults, eh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with that. Well, yeah, you, so you know what you're doing when you're not bothering with that. You're affecting this, this, and this. Well, I'm just one person. Yeah, but if 10% of the people in this city don't do it, that's 25 million people. I mean, 25 million dollars we just lost mm -hmm. because I'm not going to be bothered. Well, we're asking you be bothered, but the whole bother is only going to be about 10 minutes mm. if you mm -hmm. fill it out. You know, it, uh, it, it, what it can do for us individually as well as collectively would be tremendous. Mm -hmm. And 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 whether it's just the dollars that come to the community, come to the schools that we become eligible for. Uh, whether it's that representation in Washington. Right now, let's face it, Washington has a lot going on. And, and again, I don't care what, what uh, uh, party you belong to. It's, mm -hmm. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot on the line. And, and uh, there is probably the biggest swing of, of ideas that we've had in generations. We need as many voices in Washington as we can get. We can't afford to lose another seat like the last yep. census, you know? And, uh, and and so the House of Representatives is built on the census. And I forget exactly how many voters you have to have right, for I don't another know the, seat. The math, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know the exact uh, uh, formula, but I know the formula hurt us last year, the last time, and we can't afford to lose it. Your Senate, you always have your two representatives, but the House of Reps, we do lose, and then you have the contractions and everything yep. else. We can't afford that. I want to thank you both for coming in. I'm thank sure you. we'll be in touch um, as this issue progresses and the, the count gets closer um, to that day in May and throughout the summer. So mm -hmm. I no. want to thank you both for coming in. Thank we thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for getting the word out. Yep, That's going to do it for this edition of A Conversation With. I'm Jim Marshall in the New Bedford Cable Network. Thanks for watching. education what are you gonna do graduate and take some office job be like everybody else or will you dare do something different like be a teacher you could be my teacher you got the skills the smarts yes you you could be the teacher i never forget that'd be cool does that corporate job even have recess what are you gonna make of yourself what are you gonna make of me